everybody. Um, my name is Anna. I am Moby's CEO. Um, Moby is a B2B technology company. Uh, we work pretty horizontally across travel, so we always love coming to Focusrite. Um, and I'm here today to talk about our agent-facing collaborative AI platform. Um, we see a lot of technology today that tries to mirror human capability. And as much as possible, we try to build technology that better connects people to the places they travel, to their teams, um, and to the world. So uh, we're going to go ahead and actually show our product live first. And then after we do that, we'll talk a little bit about why it exists and where it came from. So I'm going to go ahead and give Andrew, my travel agent, a call. Uh, hey, Andrew. Hey, Anna. Hey, Anna. Hey, how are you? I'm doing all right. Looks like you've got an upcoming trip uh, to London. Is that what you're calling about? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Excellent. All right. And I see uh, you left us a message this morning that you're adding, you want to add a place to get chocolate and uh, an additional meal to your trip. Uh, let me see if I can help you out with that. Yeah, that would be great. Um, I know London isn't Paris, but uh, yeah, I'd still love to find some good things. Excellent. So for chocolate, were you thinking like, a, like cookies or like a chocolate shop or what type of chocolate are you looking for? Um, I was thinking maybe hot chocolate, since it's London, it's likely to be cold, rainy, lightly miserable. Excellent. All right, yeah, let me pull that up. Oh, it looks like there's a great cafe uh, that has uh, hot chocolate right near your hotel, so I'm going to bookmark that and add that in. And uh, then let's uh, look into dining preferences. Uh, what type of meal are you looking for? Um, I don't know. I was thinking something fancy, um, I don't know, a little unusual, a little bit weird. All right. Well, let me see here. We've got some Michelin starred restaurants. Uh, oh, there's dinner by uh, Heston Blumenthal uh, with dishes that are inspired by Lewis Carroll's Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Uh, is that uh, unique enough for you? <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Uh, thank you very much. All right, then let me add that as well. And uh, as we're just looking at your trip, is there anything else uh, that you need to make any sort of changes to or anything else uh, before we send this off to you? Um, yeah, I think the last thing, so I'm going to London for work and uh, Monday I have a bunch of meetings. I was wondering if you could just block that day. Oh, sure, yeah. maybe we can do that. Everything. We'll get things replanned around there, absolutely. And it also looks like you'd requested uh, to maybe visit uh, some thermal spas, and it looks like we don't have any of that currently on your itinerary. Is that okay, or should we go back and see if we can add that? No, 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 that's fine. <clears throat> all right, excellent. And that's all updated, and that'll head right over to you. Uh, so you can check that out in your app or on the site, and uh, we should be good to go. Is there anything else that I can help you with? Um, yeah, just one last thing. So I was just in Singapore um, for work. And I realized while I was there, I should have gone to Bali, Borneo, Philippines, I don't know. Um, I don't know that part of the world that well, and I was wondering maybe if you have any recommendations. Well, you know, I see here in our notes that you uh, really love uh, rainbow animals, and I know a great place to see some rainbow shrimp. That'd be great. Uh, thank you so much. So uh, I hope you all have a chance at some point to see a rainbow shrimp, uh, but they are very violent, so don't get too close. Um, so I want to share a little bit about why we built this platform. Um, so we built this agent-facing platform. Um, we're really lucky to get to work with huge brands. Um, these brands have somewhere between two and 20,000 agents, uh, which sort of blew my mind. Um, they make between five and $30 billion of revenue. And when we talk to them, they see a clear opportunity to double or in some cases triple the size of their business. Um, and the challenge that they see is the cost to recruit, hire, train, um, the people that they need to deliver this growth really doesn't scale. So the cost curve basically, which is the line in orange, and that white revenue curve are starting to kind of collapse in on each other. Um, and the opportunity with Moby is to take the team these partners have today to make them twice as efficient and effective at their job. Um, that's something we've demonstrated with customers. Um, and then probably as importantly, as they look to bring on new team, um, to let them hire an awesome customer service person who's previously worked at Starbucks, right? They don't need to have travel experience. They don't need to understand the GDS systems um, in a couple hours as opposed to days or weeks, or even in some cases years, they cannot, can come on and do an extraordinary job. Um, the UI you saw in the live demo is maybe 5% of the work we've done. It's sitting on top of six core services, a world-class content repository, 
includes flight and rental car. We didn't show that today. Um, transportation and routing solution, adaptive and dynamic itinerary and packaging solution, real-time notifications, real-time recommendations that respond to the place, to the weather, really find the very best thing uh, for the person. And then an insight-rich contextual customer profile that understands who we are changes depending on where we're going and who we're with. Um, in terms of what Moby is as a company, uh, we try to be a little bit like McKinsey in terms of our ability to really listen <coughs> to our partners um, and understand their strategy, a little like Palantir in terms of our ability to deliver something to a major brand where what we do is really core to who they are, um, ideally without <laughs> drones or missiles, um, and a little bit like <laughs> Google in terms of our reliability and ability to scale. Um, and that's pretty much it. So uh, thank you very much for having us. <laughs> thank you, Anna. <clears throat> Audience, let's see your thumbs. Thumbs up or thumbs down. What do you think of Moby's Tools for Agents? Once again, looks like a lot of greens. Well done, Anna. Focus group, what did you think? A few reds, a few greens. Maybe let's start with one of the reds. Evan, you want to jump in first? I, I, great presentation. I think it's a really interesting agent interface and definitely shows the trend of the future. I, you know, why is that an AI pitch versus just, you know, we put a smart Google iframe that you can customize in for agents? Like, isn't it, aren't you just Google plus Salesforce? I don't really understand the whole Palantir advanced data thing. And if you were to succeed on AI, I just think, it, you know, the whole value proposition of the agent is the, is the human element. So does it have to be trained by you know, how does that have to be trained by the agents that are servicing versus sourcing from something central where you're basically just going to go to lowest common denominator? Okay. Um, that is a fantastic question and shows that you deeply understand sort of the problem we're working on. So um, we use, when we talk about AI, we actually talk about three types of AI. So generative AI, language models. Um, we use that for preference elicitation. So coming off the notes you saw, coming off a call to understand like who is this person, what do they want, and to help the agent understand that really quickly. Um, for planning, when we're understanding how to piece the trip together, understanding taking the opening hours, taking the transportation, taking all of those factors together, we're actually using old AI, um, right? Like AI that was developed back in the 70s um, that uses constraint yeah. programming to model the world. Um, and to solve a problem that using even a supercomputer could take a week in a fraction of a second, in under 200 milliseconds in most cases, so that the UI is as responsive as you need it to be. Um, if you've ever sat and like waited for a flight, just a flight result, right, to pop up, you know how slow some of the travel tooling can be. Um, and so it's taken a ton of technology, and I think one of the things, actually, when I picked those three companies, um, one of the reasons I'd refer to them is that like, I think we're very good at using the right technology, not just the hot technology, for the right problem at the right place at the right time. Um, and then the other half of your question, I think, is super, super valid, right? When we're, uh, we talk about sort of like automating the ordinary to deliver the extraordinary, so how do you take a lot of time and effort out of a traditional agent's workflow? so that they're actually able to spend more time, like all the kind of silly thing, what almost felt silly, right, in the conversation with Andrew, um, but that really builds a human connection, that builds an emotional relationship, not just a transactional relationship with the customer. Um, I think that's really what we aim to do and deliver. So, yeah, right. fantastic question. One Thank more you. quick question. Can you talk a little bit about your business model? How do you make money on this? Yeah, so... Um, in like 10 seconds. <laughs> Uh, we deliver that huge, the, 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 when the graph goes like this, there's lots of opportunities to charge basically an enterprise SaaS uh, platform model for the services that we deliver. Great. Thank you. Anna? 